The immigration centre on Christmas Island was labelled a factory for mental illness after overcrowding and frustration led to a series of riots and disturbances. Tonight, we're bringing you a new perspective from inside the detention centre. A guard has broken ranks with the government and Circo, the secretive company that runs the centre, to give Late Line a disturbing account of working life inside the facility. We've agreed to protect his identity because he fears for his job. His language is colourful, at times even offensive, but his story adds to a sense of urgency that there are serious problems in the way Australia is managing the flow of asylum seekers. Peter Lloyd reports. I thought I was going to go up there and change the world. Yeah, you go up there, it's an eye opener. It's just an eye opener. When trouble breaks out on Christmas Island, security is the first line of defence. But according to at least one guard, when there's an average of one officer for every hundred detainees, the mayhem is hard to contain. First off, you just go, shit. Then you just go and try and help, you know, people who are not involved get out of the way, go to their rooms. And then, if it's out of control, you just... Leave the scene and let him go. Every man for himself? Yeah, but you help your mates out first. If anyone's hurt or you're in trouble, you go and grab them, protect them, just drag everyone out and just let them go. Yeah, we're paying for it all and these monkeys are going, ripping everything apart. It's just a wanted waste. He is a self-confessed angry man, angry at some asylum seekers and Serco, the company that runs the Christmas Island Detention Centre on behalf of the federal government. You shut out for a week, then in you go. This is you, this is what you gotta do, go for it. And you're learning as you go. It'll make you a stronger person or it turn you into a puddle. What sort of preparation and training did you get for this job? Put it bluntly, Jack shit. He says he was hired to guard the fence line, but instead found himself working directly with asylum seekers and their desperate acts of self-harm. Slashings. Hangings. Or one hand. What's that like to witness? Messy. Yeah. Blood getting squirting everywhere. It's not a nice sign. What do you do? Just calm them down, wrap them up, shove them off the medical, then clean up the mess. What happens to the paperwork when there is trouble? Your hands are tied. You, know, you might get unruly uh, detainee. An immigration will say, oh no, you can't do him, you can't touch him. Even if he pushes you or shoves you, you just look at him. If you ride him up, sometimes he gets, goes into bin 13. And that's it. On Christmas Island, bin 13 is code for the document shredder. Among guards, it's popularly believed that Serco keeps the truth about what happens from the government. This guard says it happened to a report involving an attack on him. Who shredded the document? A Serco guard. A Serco manager. Yeah, officer, yeah. yeah. Is this common practice? I say so. Serco says that's not true, but the guard we spoke to insists Serco is misleading the Immigration Department about what happens inside the Christmas Island Detention Centre. He claims the company is desperately short on staff and deliberately inflates worker numbers on paper to cover up the shortages. Are there guards on the roster who just don't exist? Yep. They're not on the island, but they're on the roster. Again, Serco says that's wrong. In a statement, it said, we strongly reject any suggestion that Serco undertakes any such process. This was the awful scene that Australians awoke to last December. Almost 50 would-be asylum seekers died in the Christmas Island shipwreck. It's an event that continues to haunt at least one man who was there. I was down at Lily Beach when they brought the survivors on, helped uh, 
first aid, warm them up, strip them down, warm clothes, comfort them, help with first aid, triage, and then try and keep people back for when they start bringing the, the victims, the bodies on, onto the, onto the shore. Did you receive any support, counselling? A bit of counselling, but yeah, pat on the back and yeah, you know, done well, guys. Wouldn't have gone astray, would have helped. But I think everyone was pretty well fucked up after that. Yeah, it's on the piss for four days. Binge drinking, he says, is commonplace. You ever had to go to work a bit? Everyone has. Yeah. Absolutely shit faced at sometimes. At work. Anyone notice? Bums on seat, mate. How do you mean? I don't know, she had turned up for work. You got a gig? The claims made by this man have been backed up by two Serco guards in statements to Lateline. We are very short-staffed. When the riot broke out between the Afghans and Iranians in February, there were 15 guards to 2,500 detainees. When I went for the job, Serco sold it to me as a quiet place where the accommodation will be at a resort. They described it to me as a paradise island. It was hell. In response, Serco strongly rejected any suggestion that Christmas Island is understaffed and denied it inflates staff numbers. It also says its training is adequate and that last year the company spent more than $1.5 million training staff involved in the immigration contract. Peter Lloyd, late